Hey guys, I'm Corvi, and today I'm going over the best NVIDIA driver for performance. This is important for you to hear. The truth of the matter is, is that each driver will have different results across each game. For example, some drivers will perform better in Fortnite than with Apex Legends with a different driver. It's important for you to test these yourselves for your main game. The things I'll be covering in this video include how to properly install a driver, overall DPC latency, and frames. Remember guys, if it's not broken, then don't fix it. That means that if you have no issues right now, then don't go looking for some. I'll be leaving my Discord in the description if you wish to discuss further on this topic of this video. But first, a Q&A. Question. They say I should always update to the most recent driver. Is the newest the best? What I have to say to that is no. Just like with game updates, sometimes performance bugs are introduced and can ruin your performance with stutterings, low frame rate, and increased latency. Question. I've had stuttering on my current driver for the past few game updates. Which driver is the best for me? I'll say to this one, only change it if the problem occurred immediately after updating. Video drivers aren't the only source of stuttering. If you change it again and it continues to stutter, you should know the issue likely lies elsewhere. For example, some potential issues could be the game update itself that introduces performance bugs like I was talking about before, a background app that uses too much resources, and then check for overheating issues and throttling as well. Make sure that you have well-balanced computer components. And lastly, when there are game updates, check around for new settings that could be affecting you as well. Make sure that everything is fully tuned for your performance. Now with that out of the way, the drivers that I'm going to be looking at is 472.12.526.47.527.37.58.545.84.546.17 and 546.29. So seven drivers in total, one of them being pretty old. And the reason why I have this old one is that back in the day, this was a really good good driver so I want to see if it still holds up to today's standards and who knows it might even still be good for lower end GPUs I think everything is a valid test to try out and just so you know the method of installation that I am going to be doing is NV clean install and just in case you guys want to go and download these on your own which I do recommend using NV clean install to do so you want to go ahead and select manually select a driver version show all versions. And then for my current driver, for example, I'll scroll on down until 537.58. Just right here, you'll see 64-bit desktop DCH. Now, if you have a notebook, you'll obviously want to do notebook. And if you want to do studio, you obviously want to do studio. Studio is not recommended for gaming. I wouldn't do that one. So you'll either want to be using a notebook if you have a notebook, but if not, stick with desktop, click it, hit next. And then here you'll see everything that you can de-bloat. So pretty much everything, I believe you'll be able to uncheck. So once again, I'm just gonna hit next. It's gonna do a quick little install. Now after it installs, you'll see that there's even more installation tweaks. So first one right here being disable install telemetry and advertising. That's pretty much like tracking and stuff. You don't want to be tracked. Form a clean installation. This basically should, in theory, remove all of the previous drivers and residue as well. Next up, we have disable MPO or multiplane overlay. And what this is, is that it allows for multiple frame buffers to be composited via fixed function hardware and the display controller rather than using graphics or compute shaders for composition, yada, yada, yada. Basically, disabling it can help with some desktop apps flicker or with stutter issues. Kind of like when you get a black screen when alt tabbing from games or apps. It should help with those type of flicker. And then obviously you guys know what stuttering is. It's what I do like every other sentence, but you guys wouldn't know because I cut it all out. Disabling Ansel, I believe that has something to do with adding filters to pictures or something. So it's going to drop your frames by 10 if you have this. I would get rid of it and then right here at the bottom show expert tweaks we want to once again get rid of telemetry i'm gonna leave nvidia container on because we want the control panel later on nvidia hd audio sleep we want to disable that hdcp it's basically high definition content protection we want to turn it off it, it does tend to cause some latency after HDCP, we want to also enable message signal interrupts. For those of you that didn't know that on each driver install, NVIDIA resets a registry key which disables MSI mode and forces devices to fall back to legacy INTX mode. So after you check that, you just want to go ahead, put it on high. After you go ahead and get that set up, just check these two here at the bottom, hit next, and it is going to run through with the install and you'll have your completely debloated NVIDIA driver. There we go, says it's finished. And then if you want, you can show in folder, but I'm just going to go ahead and hit install. And then from here on out, everything is going to look pretty similar. Standard NVIDIA installer, agree and continue, custom, 
perform clean installation is already put on. And just once again, clean installation restores all NVIDIA settings to default values, removes any profiles you have created. Just keep on going through with the installation. It's an overall really simple process. Now that the install is finished, you should be all good to go. And before I go through with all the benchmarkings and stuff, I do want to quickly go over the NVIDIA control panel settings and profile inspector settings as well. So just right here, you'll see once again, I'm on 537.58. Head on over to manage 3D settings. And then here, you'll just want to copy pretty much everything that I'm doing here as well. So off on the first six, background application max frame rate, you're probably fine leaving that on off. Kudo GPUs, set it to all. DSR factors, leave it on off. Low latency mode i like keeping this on on i believe that you want to use ultra if you have very high gpu usage so outside of that you should leave it on on as well max frame rates you don't really need to cap it unless if you play a game that has no cap and then in that case you might want to set it to 5 or 10 above your refresh mfaa you want to go ahead and leave that on off opengl compatibility auto same thing with opengl rendering gpu just leave it on auto select power management mode leave it on maximum performance if anyone says otherwise you're Honestly, kind of insane, because I have had people tell me that before. Preferred refresh rate, you want to set it to the highest available. Shader cache, I go ahead and leave that on unlimited, and if you have the storage, I would recommend doing that as well. Anastrophic sample optimization, you want to go ahead and leave it to on. Basically, what that does is that it limits the amount of anastrophic samples used. Texture filtering quality, you want to set that to high performance. Texture filtering trilinear optimization, you want to go ahead and set that to on. Threaded optimization, I found that with Fortnite. It's better to have it off. Triple buffering, off. V-Sync, turn it off. That adds on latency. And then the rest of these don't really matter too much. There are some VR settings that you shouldn't really need to concern yourself with unless if you do use VR. Lastly, come on down to adjust desktop size and position. This is extremely irrelevant, but just make sure that your perform scaling on display. But the reason that I did come here is just make sure that you're on your highest refresh rate. Go ahead hit apply, close out of that. And then next I have NVIDIA profile inspector here and you're just gonna wanna go ahead and copy these as well. These G-Sync settings basically just make sure that it's off because once again, G-Sync and V-Sync do add latency. Head on down to predefine FXAA usage. You can go ahead and disallow this. Prevent anastrophic filtering, go ahead and turn that on. Keep on scrolling through till you see CUDA force P2 state. P2 state is kind of like a power saving mode. We want to go ahead and turn that off. And then lastly, there's just one setting that is down here under the other tab. You want to go ahead and find predefined Ansel usage and set it to the top one here, allow disallowed. Now there is one more setting that you are free to adjust. I heard that this middle setting right here, moderate pre allocation works good as well, but I'm going to go ahead, leave it on the default. After that, spam apply a few times you really don't have to do that i just do it for fun and then the last thing that you want to do is your msi mode utility the custom install should have already put this to high but i just do this to double check and it looks like it is set to high so if it's not once again just go ahead grab this high hit apply right here in the corner close out now that i got all of the little things out of the way feel free to sit back enjoy the benchmarks so my game of choice that I'm going to be testing now is Fortnite. I'm going to be running latency mod in the background for five minutes. And I pick five minutes just because I have seven drivers I'm going to test out. I'm not trying to be here all day, but it should still give you a pretty good solid understanding of the drivers and their different performance, whether it be frames, latency, or anything else. Maybe I'm a little young, but you don't know what I've become. Can't you see it in my face? So for my final results at the five minute, two second mark is 54.80, highest current measure interrupt to process latency, 172.50, ISR 14.37, and then highest DPC is 345, and then total hard page fault count 55. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. <laughs>
with 472.12, our currently measured interrupt process latency is 132.60. Highest measured interrupt process latency is 229 and 10. Highest reported ISR is 56.74. Highest reported DPC 363.94. And once again, total harsh payfault count is 55. Next up on the list of testing, we have 526.47. So as you can see with this driver 526.47, we did actually get a pretty large DPC spike at one point. Overall, the stats from this one are not too far off from 537.58 but it still is not the best and that spike i i did feel that spike when it did happen it was it was pretty bad in an actual game that could have just got you killed right there moving on to the next driver that we're going to use it is going to be 527.37 <laughs> For 527.37, we actually do have some pretty good stats as well. In comparison to what I still believe to be the best one, we have 50 here, 90 there. We have 50 and 90, 172 and 180. We have 14 and 18, and then we have 345 and 290, and then slightly less hard page faults. And with that, let's go ahead and move into the next driver as well. Guys, I think I angered my cat. I just woke her up from sleeping. On this driver, as you can see right here, we have 47.9, we have 108.4, and then we have 7. And then this one is honestly really, really high compared to the other ones, minus 526.47. So we have 536.230, and then a hard page fault. Yeah, no, that is really high. But it doesn't necessarily mean it is an issue, but it's, it's definitely extremely high compared to the other ones. Next up on the list, we have 546.17. Let's go ahead and give that a try. For our driver 546.17, the results are as follows. We got 76.9, 162.1, 59.7, and 519.62, along with 41 hard page faults. Overall, not the worst stats in the world. And now on to our very last driver that we'll be testing out, 546.29. I'm happy that testing is almost over. I don't think I said this before, but I feel very sick right now. And I honestly probably shouldn't even be doing this until I do get better. Because my head, it feels like it is on fire. Like, I have a pretty bad fever, I feel like. But, you know, I'm out here. I'm doing the grinds. I'm here for you guys. The recording date of this video is December 31st. I'm going to try to get this out on New Year's. So everyone, I hope that you had an amazing 2023. Go ahead and let me know some of the stuff that you guys have planned for this year, like some New Year's resolutions. I'll go ahead and start with some of mine. One of my resolutions is to get better at Fortnite. Um, I really want to get into comp, but I can't really find people that are close to my level. And I know I don't have a lot of PR. I shouldn't be talking about how I can't find any good teammates when I haven't really proven myself to be a good one. But still, I, I really want to get into the comp scene. 
want to find a good teammate and you know i just i want to get better at fortnite i want to get up there another thing too one of my resolutions for the uh the upcoming year is to put on some some weight as well you guys i don't think you've ever seen me before but i am a twig so i want to put on weight i want to get to uh to 160 pounds by the end of this next year which uh i i'm doing pretty good so far i i was chilling around 130 just a few months ago and i'm currently around 140 so it's slow but we get in there I honestly do think by the end of next year, I should get the, that resolution down. So yeah, those are some of my resolutions for this upcoming year. I also, on YouTube, I want to get to at least 20k subs by the end of next year. Right now, we're at about 5k. That's, that's insane to me. Like, I think my oldest video right now is about 8 months old. So just in under a year, we have 5k subs, which I have literally all of you guys to thank for. Let's plan some big things for this next year. Once again, let me know down below some of the resolutions that you guys have, as I'm going to be very interested in reading all of them. So the stats on this last driver here is honestly pretty impressive. Let me go ahead and do... Okay, so we got 52.4. We got 169.2. And then we have 6.5 for this one. And then 316 along with 32 hard page faults. So now time for the final results. For the best high FPS, we have... 546.29 the best average fps i saw was on driver 537.58 and for the best lows i saw it on 546.17 for the worst high fps i saw it was 526.47 with 739 fps the worst average i saw was 527.37 with 490 and then the worst low i saw was on 526.47 with 12 fps and that happened because of a stutter, but I'm still counting that as a low because all sort of stutters and lags should be taken into consideration as well. For the worst current process latency, we have 472.12 with 132. The worst high also given to them as well with 229. The worst ISR was with 527.37 with 228. And the worst DPC was with 526.47 with 1,949. For the best current process latency, we have 545.84 with 47.9. For the best high, it also goes to them as well with 108.4. For the best ISR, we have 526.47 with 6.9. And for the best DPC overall, we have 527.37 with 292. My personal take on what all of this means, because I know there's a lot of info to process, is I would go with 537.58. That's the one I used before the benchmarkings, and it's the one I'm currently using now. It runs the best for me, but in theory, two other really good options to use is 546.29 and 527.37. So once again, if you want my take on it, use the one that I'm using. And feel free to try out the other two as well. With that, everyone, I've been here for a week longer than I should have with editing this video. I'm going to take a break now. Love you guys. See you in the next one.